let's take a look back at our last time at the Nordschleife. And I'm not able to hold that one into the wall race because I'm going to run into the wall. Got that this was the jump. I thought this was the flat out section after it. So I full throttle through the jump into the wall. Just a few corners later, I take way too much of this curb flying through the air and into the wall. I want to take a quick uh, moment to appreciate this livery. And the reason I want to take that moment is because well, it's about time for a new one. We've been through a lot with this livery. I mean, I'm probably gonna get a little sentimental here, but like all of the way back to my first video where I lost my house, um, that's why I now live this in a garage. A I mean, I was, I was making 20 FPS videos with captions that took up like half of the screen. And it just, it just brings back, th this livery in general just reminds me of like why I started this. When I started this, when I was on TikTok, this is before YouTube, I made, tons of TikTok videos. My first one ever with this livery almost two years ago now, just about. And it was a video of me getting absolutely shucked off of the course by that guy. And I want to give a huge thanks to everybody who supported on Twitch, bought these stickers, everybody who's been part of the community on Discord, and just this journey as a whole. I mean, I remember waking up and like sitting at my computer waiting for the guy who I bought this livery, Tam, huge shout out to him, to get back to me with the livery. And the day I got it, I was just like ecstatic. I was losing my shit. I had not done any content. Uh, I had just imagined that I would one day. And two years later, here we are, same livery continuing the push and you know getting better at driving hopefully you guys have been enjoying the growth of content i'm trying to learn on that side as well and this has been a sign of all of that but all good things must come to an end and so we drive it into the pits one last time it's not dead but may you rest in peace livery and thank you so much but it's time to move on J like the letter, I'm making several waves I know the mission is same I made a splash, now all of my past is last Like running a race with Usain I keep it coming like this a buffet And if I'm stumbling, I'm in the craze Never gon' fumble it, I get the bag and I run with it Gunning it, gunning it, gunning it Hurry with the legs, all about finesse I am not impressed uh, I don't need a rash coming in with last Then you see the flash uh, And I'm here with the melody And the heat supply the breath uh, 70, keep it heavenly Everybody get the bread This is the car, this is the track, and this is a cat with a baguette. Also, I forgot to turn off voice chat for this race, um, so you'll see how that goes. So yeah, there's the new livery. Joey is rocking it as well. I am a few places behind him. I'm starting in P8. There's no qualifying for this, or I hadn't put in the qualifying yet, so we're gonna get underway. Three laps of Nordschleife. Peep the new launch. It is going absolutely fantastic for us. Really good launch for us. We're already past one person, about to be past another car number two there, heading into the first corner of the uh, arena section or the GP section. And car number two runs into us, trying to find space, kind of pushes us wide. As we cut back, we're going to have a moment with him. It's pretty large net code. We probably would have ended up hitting him anyway. I'm really sad that it collected the guy on the outside there, and we'll kind of cover that a little bit later when we hear from him. Up into P5 as car number five in our right full place defending the inside of the downhill right hand kind of like hairpin super banked at the bottom of it so if you hit it just right you get onto the throttle really early and just absolutely fly out of there and if anybody here was around for my last time through the Norch life you'll probably remember that it was terrible for me I think I lost about 600 or 700 I rating in that one week and this one is hopefully going to be a lot different as I have settled into the track quite a bit now I did a few quite a few practice uh, sessions before ever driving it this year. We're on board with Joey right now in P3, who is chasing down P2. We're just a few seconds behind him. And I, I did notice that my relative seems to not be working at all. It was just stuck on all zeros. So we're gonna go ahead and just get rid of the relative as a whole. I'm not sure, I couldn't get it to work. I tried different overlays as well and I just could not get the relative to show up. So you're just going to have to trust me when I give like relative numbers 
as well as like position standings and everything because that also was kind of updating funkily. I begin to slightly pull away from the car behind as well as close up to the car ahead so that means more slipstream. It should be easier and easier to pull away from the car behind through Foxhole down to fourth gear, uh, taking this a bit reserved on the first lap, definitely down to third gear here. Sometimes I like to stay in fourth there actually uh, as it, you can get on the throttle earlier I feel like and really not risk spinning your wheels at all as well as you just tend to carry more speed if you don't let yourself shift down that last time. Behind car number 11 looking for an opportunity up the inside but opting to back out just in I mean in, in interest of my own safety as well as car number 11's and everybody comes through here just fine. It's the first lap we have a long long way to go and there's a lot of straights so you don't always want to get past somebody early. Now looking at car number 22 this is a few cars behind us I think this is like the middle of the grid and everything is about to go south for this guy taking way too much of that inside curve you do want to hit that apex but not like that getting on the throttle as like 10 cars come behind him he's going to get sent into the air by car number 20 and spin around end up facing the right way albeit with a ton of damage just a couple of seconds later car number 20 taking way too much of this inside curve 19 looking for an opportunity around the outside 23 entering the fray with a sick drift and 22 actually picks up two positions back from uh from all of that so losing about four picking two up and he will be in this video some more later so as we come around that next corner long left hander that leads into the very fast uphill right hander here just brushing the brakes and then basically slamming on the throttle as soon as you get into that camber getting a really good run and 11 is going to hold the inside here there is a pretty long straight coming up after this next corner we're going to go side by side through here and 11 is going to back out moving us up into p4 and then i get a private message from tom buley shout out to tom buley we've been talking on instagram uh, he's a professional race car driver in australia and i did not realize flashing back to that first incident i was wondering kind of how he died and it was this netcode incident that's tom so we killed tom tom i am so sorry about that that was 100 i mean that traces back to me by all accounts so yeah sorry about that tom but thank you for cheering me on anyway as we go through the very long straight that leads to hell corner car number 11 definitely had the opportunity to pass me by here but he uh he short shifts into six as well as releasing the throttle a little bit and i'm gonna say that that's because he trusted my pace however it's gonna kind of i mean more than him it's gonna bite number eight in the ass here as travis comes flying up picks up that position almost looks for a position on car number 11 but he's gonna back out car number eight now finds himself side by side with car number 13 who will be a prominent player in this race and you'll see why later 13 backs out of there uh eight drives off of the track and then car number two who we had that incident with is stuck behind both of these guys and he's going to be pretty vocal about that and pretty vocal about a lot of stuff this entire race come on so he is in the middle of this massive like group behind i mean look at this it's like 10 car or maybe it's like nine cars within like a second and a half two seconds somewhere around there 13 getting a rough exit out of the carousel and that's going to slow car number two down once again he's not happy about that we are fortunately able to start pulling away from that pack as 11 did not want to make a move on us into hell which may have saved our position and quite a bit of time not just for us but also for 11 i think it's a smart move not to fight on that corner can just barely see joey up ahead we caught the tail end of his car there not really able to pull away from these guys too much right now joey is still looking to steal p2 from this guy and he's pretty close to the leader as well so a race win could be on for him i think we're about four three four seconds behind joey a little bit of a slide through youtube corner and as that next corner comes up it's kind of an off camber in the middle of it and a little bit too much angle he's going to slide into the grass and do a full 360 as we come through we're going to pick up that position so we move on to the podium and uh travis and car number 11 follow me through joey will be right behind them so he's going to fall into this group behind uh this large group car number 13 being one of them but he's going to slide going over that little jump keeps his front two tires on the tarmac so it keeps him facing the right direction for the most part but he will be completely out of the that that massive group ahead although with potential to catch up because when there's that many cars that close they tend not to run the greatest laps now as we come to the final sector of the norwich life or the final sector before the uh the dottinger we are trying to get as far away from these guys as we can because i know that if they are close enough and they don't even have to be that close uh, as long as they're within about a second they can probably pull up to me within the dottinger because that slipstream is so very strong and i have him at about i'd say six tenths behind me at the moment which is not really ideal unless he were to push me which would be awesome perhaps we could break away from travis behind if he were to push me i'm really hoping that's the case i'm just going to stay on the inside all of the way down the dottinger and he is well within the uh the distance to be slipstreaming so he's going to start 
pulling on, up to me pretty quick. I do a little bit of movement uh, just to maybe throw off the slipstream. It's not going to make a difference, but he actually lifts before we get to the Bilstein Bridge, so that's fantastic. It means he's not looking for that position into this final corner. Perhaps he could be looking for it into the GP. I'm not very confident into the GP. I tend to lose about one to two seconds there actually uh, per lap compared to Joey or probably the guys ahead of me as well. I just could not quite figure out this part of the track. I, I think I really just hadn't put enough time into it. 22, who had that moment earlier, is going to not break into the final end of the dotting or sending car number 10 into the wall, and he's going to spin around and have a perfect little face-off with him. Really, man? Not happy about that, and rightfully so. Crossing on to lap number two, we are sitting in P3 at the moment. The cars behind are just about close enough for maybe them to be fighting. I was really hoping that they would, but Travis ends up just settling behind car number 11. A little bit of contact there, but nothing malicious, I think. You know, that just happens sometimes. You have a little bit of a fender bender, but nothing major, and that was kind of sad for me. I was really hoping he would look up the inside or start some sort of fight because I knew I was not fast through here, and I didn't really feel fast honestly until we get past flug plats uh, that middle section is where i feel the most confident on the norwich life by the time we come through the chicane i'm decently far ahead i have enough of a gap that i'm not under pressure plus 11 is going to slide exiting the chicane that means travis is going to go through which i was not upset about but i was a little worried about because i know travis probably has some better pace than carnar or i mean at least by judging by their eye rating travis should be faster i'm not sure if that's true or not but that was just something i noticed skipping ahead quite a bit in uh, lap number two and we've actually begun to pull away from Travis pretty substantially he has that car behind him so he has some sort of pressure I'm sure that's playing a role into his pace we're gonna drive directly into the dirt through hell corner but I mean we're maintaining probably a second a second and a half gap right now to Travis which if we could keep that gap it should keep us safe on the Dottinger and if we can be safe on the Dottinger we should be able to pull away in the final lap uh, through the Norwich life I did I did think my pace was actually a little bit faster than Travis just judging on how the run had gone this lap and also i just want to say that i know last time i talked i didn't talk shit about this track but i i made it clear that i wasn't a huge fan i absolutely love this track now i don't know what happened i love it this is p2 and this is the gap from p2 to me i'd say it's about three to four seconds at this point uh yeah probably about four and a half seconds actually so it's not too bad of a gap. The gap behind me to Travis is large enough that I am safe on the Dottinger. I don't even know if he's getting slipstream at this point, but that is all about to change. Coming through the final corner of the track, I try and carry a bit too much speed while still riding the brakes and then before I let the car settle, I get onto the throttle, making a massive move here, driving into the barrier to get out of the way of everybody else. And this, this rejoin, is probably one of my favorite things I have ever done. It might sound weird. I mean, typically an overtake is like what you really enjoy, but this was, I felt so happy with the way this went. So I let three cars through there, driving out of the way, some quick thinking, driving through the barrier, literally phasing through it, and then rejoining without killing anybody. Let's go. Everybody stayed safe, and I was pretty happy with that. We are under a bit of pressure from behind as we cross onto the final lap, but there's still a lot to be gained here. You can see the two cars ahead fighting a little bit into corner number one, eventually settling behind each other, but I did feel confident that I could catch up, get some slipstream, and with two cars that close, I could potentially gain both of those positions through the Norwich life. Most of the faster guys were running low 750s or high 48s. My pace wasn't quite there. I'd say I was running 52s slash 53s at this point, but um, that would change with time, of course. Car number 13, taking a brief look ahead. So he's actually going through this right-hander, but he's a lap down. Joe Joey is in this group fighting for P3. Car number 13 going to join right next to him. Just barely make contact with Joey, but nobody is hurt, thank God. Or nobody was hurt yet, I should say. I didn't love your videos, mate. Thank you, Greg. Shout out to Greg for that. He is a fan of the channel. Heading towards Foxhole. I mean, we have potential here to move up into P7, which is that white car at the front of this group which I would be happy with. I mean, P3 would have been great, but you can see that there's smoke up ahead and the situation is about to get really hairy. Two cars ahead, switching position over the grass, and then he goes back around the outside as we now get caught behind car number 13, who went into the wall once again through this corner. And like I said, this guy is a lap. I think he's actually, yeah, he's on his second lap and this is the third lap. So he's a lap down and he's letting everybody through on the right. Granted, the racing line here, you do need to open it up. I thought he was going to stay on the inside. He pulls over to the outside at the last second and I sent him into the shadow realm yeah I mean I definitely could have done something to avoid him here but I feel like that was a pretty unpredictable move from him I just wasn't expecting it 
we get a four times from that, which wouldn't normally be a problem, except that four times would put us four incidents away from a drive-through. And that is an issue. If we get a drive-through, that's an issue. So you get four incident points from hitting somebody. So if I were to hit one more person, I get a drive-through, which could potentially send us down to like P19, maybe. The, the penalties take forever. Now up ahead, that group fighting for P3, Travis at the front going deep before the carousel. Car number one is going to slip up the inside. He's gonna pull back. Come on, man. And yeah, car number two wasn't too happy about that. Once again, asking somebody to come on. And this is where the drama is gonna kind of begin on the last lap. So Joey getting a good run out of the carousel, touching car number two there, and car number two, once again, not happy. Come on, Joey. What the fuck, man? <laughs> shut up. Now, I typically don't have my voice chat on, but I'm really happy I had it on for this race because it gave me a good laugh. Bad exit through the carousel for car number 16, I think that is. So we move up into P8. Up ahead, car number two is riding the ass of Travis, who is now in P4 as car number four. And Joey holding P6 is about to have a bit of a moment, grinding the curb there, keeping it on track, though. Definitely has a little bit of damage, it looks like, from that spin on the first lap. Car number two still putting pressure on Travis at every single corner, staying within like a tenth max, I'd say two tenths. A bit of a slide through that corner for Travis and car number two getting right up on his tail as close as he can. Nothing wrong with this driving. I mean, this is this is racing, right? You put pressure on somebody. It's one way to force somebody into a mistake. So, I mean, had he not been on the mic, I mean, he's, he's driving fine. He eventually backs off. And as soon as he backs off, Travis is going to go a bit deep through there, run almost into the grass on the other side. And they make contact as two is making the pass. Poor Joey is collected in this. And car number two ends up facing the right way. Joey's car, I mean, it's pretty much toast. Here I come. As car number two rejoins the track, managed to avoid him, or so I thought. I mean, look at this. There, there was no contact there. The, uh, the rejoin definitely scared me a bit, but I feel, and I mean, looking at this, I did not touch him. But Netcode said otherwise, so I got a four times for contact. Joey has to tow to the pit lane. I have to serve this drive through still, so I'm, I mean, I'm basically toasted. Who knows where I'm going to end up finishing, even though I'm in P5 right now. And this is where the voice chat really kicks into full gear. Stupid. I think car number two had a drive through as well. So he's just going to let Travis through here. No point in fighting anything. And just to rub salt in the wound, car number two taking that curb, sliding off to the side. <laughs> Travis not holding back, throwing fuel onto the fire. That is the voice chat of the last lap of Norwich Life. You're stupid, Travis. Mother, what the fuck is stupid guy? And then he slides out, heading on to the Dottinger. I'm not stupid, I'm just slow. If you want to just run past lap time, go do time trial. You are slow and stupid, guys. Nice race. Bro, chill. I mean, just qualify better. Like, I don't know what to tell you. I'm not just going to hand over the position to you. And, yeah, I mean, I think everybody has a valid point here. No, no one's just going to give you a position, especially on the last lap. To put icing on the cake for me, I don't realize how close the pit lane is, and I speed into it. So that's a stop-and-go penalty on top of my drive through It doesn't matter because I'm not going to be able to serve either of them, crossing the line before the drive through is served. And, uh, yeah, that'll demote me all of the way down to P15. So what could have been an absolutely fantastic first race at the Norwich Life gone south, but still an extremely fun race overall. You're, you're going to report me for you taking me out? Good luck with that. Danilo, I could literally beat you at any track. Name a time and place. I could beat you anywhere, anytime. Then this guy comes out of nowhere. This is my first time driving these cars. Things are pretty hard. The braking is pretty, really complicated. It doesn't have as much error as a full-spec GT3. And then his multiple personality disorder kicks in. You don't have as much error as a full-spec GT3. And that was the race for me. By the way, this is the guy who was just talking, so I'm sure you remember him from the video, and he's driving around the Nordschleife like five minutes after everybody else has already left, and just talking on the mic to himself in different voices. Uh, 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 speechless, speechless. Here are the results. P15, up and down, and down and down race that was amazingly we gained safety rating we did lose a little bit of i rating but i mean for having 17 incident points in a drive through to gain that much safety rating is ridiculous i guess everybody had a lot of incident points so the bar was pretty low if you guys want to support me please check out my channel and some of my other videos we have a lot more of Nordschleife life to come this week